I'm so excited. I'm a little nervous, but this is on my heart. This is on my mind. So I'm going to share this. And this is primarily for the playback. Um, so if you're watching, thank you for watching. I want to invite the Holy Spirit into this space. God, I ask that you bless and protect my heart and my mind. Allow me to transmit this message the way that you need it to be heard. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your wisdom, your peace. Thank y'all for being here. I am going to post this on YouTube as well. The title of today's program <laughs> is Count It All Joy. God has been preparing us. God has been preparing us. God has been preparing us. There is a collective awakening taking place. This is a Christ consciousness awakening. We are all awakening to the Christ within us and the Christ around us. There are chosen people that I'm talking to and that need to hear this message so that you can awaken to who you truly are and start to bring light to this place of darkness or to the places of darkness within this realm. God has been preparing us. God has been getting us ready for the spiritual warfare that is currently ravaging this planet, this earth, America. God has been preparing us. There are so many people who have um, kind of prophesied or like told me about 2020 to 2024 and all the things that have been taking place. If anybody watched Cat Williams' most recent interview, I'm sure you guys all know or y'all all heard him say that, you know, 2024 is the year of exposure. A lot of things will be exposed. A lot of things will be exposed. How do we expose things? We shine a light on them, right? God has been preparing us. Cat Williams also said, he said, there's two sides. It's good versus evil. It's that simple. Either on God's side or you're on no side or you're on the other side. And we all know what the other side is. If y'all did not watch that um, interview with Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp, go watch that interview because he spoke about just the exposure, the light being shown on the darkness Um in this day and age he spoke about how he read the bible at a young age and he thought it was the best book ever written we have to understand who we are as god's chosen people once you are a child of god you will always be a child of god people are not going back to christianity there is a big misconception that in the conscious community whatever that is, that in um, this these new age spiritual communities that people are all of a sudden leaving and going back to Christianity. These people are not going back to Christianity. Once you are a child of God, you will always be a child of God. God is awakening his people so that we can shine a light on the kingdom uh, or for the kingdom. Um, and everything that we went through was important for us to go into the darkest corners of this world and shine a light there as well. So there aren't people going back to Christianity. People are just awakening to who they truly are. They never left Christianity to, Christianity to begin with. They never left God's side to begin with. Once you've been baptized, once you devote your life to Christ, the book says, the Bible says that you will go through um, trials. You will go through tribulation. God will start to reveal things to you. So many things will happen to you. And this is because God needs to use you. So when I look like, I'm 25. When I look at the last seven years of my life, it really feels like I went through seven years of tribulation. And all of this is written, right? But it's important. It was important for me to have gone through those things. I've been to jail. I've been to hell and back and it was important for me to go through those things so I can, you know, come on here and transmit this message with you all. People are not going back to Christianity. They never left to begin with. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, right? When we hear the word son, we hear S-O-N, but we also hear S-U-N. The S-U-N, if you look at the etymology of that, of son, it translates to soul. You are a human with the soul. I am a human with the soul. God sent his only begotten son, his only soul, right, down here on this earth that whosoever believes in God should have everlasting life, right? 
you are a human with a soul. You are a child of God. You are God's son, S-U-N, which also, again, equates to S-O-L. You are, are God's soul. As we learn in like the New Age communities, in the conscious communities, right? We are an expression of source consciousness. We are an expression of God here through a human soul on this plane, right? So you are a child of God because oftentimes when people hear that, when they hear God sent his only son down here, we're thinking male. We're thinking, oh, I I'm not a, a male. I'm not masculine entity. So that it doesn't apply to me. Son means soul. God sent a soul down here so that whoever believes in God here on this place will have everlasting life, right? Sorry. Again, the sun is the light of the world, right? We live in a world that, I mean, it's winter time now, so the sun isn't quite out, but we live in a world where the sun rules, where the sun is the light of the world. You are a sun, you are a soul, you are a light in this world. And it's important that you hear this message so you can awaken to who you are. God has always been with you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. It also says that, one second, y'all. It, it also says that, consider it pure joy. That's why I titled this message, Count It All Joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The testing of your faith produces spiritual maturity. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. Perseverance is spiritual maturity. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So allow yourself to be tested. Allow yourself to go through trials and tribulations in this life so that you can strengthen your faith, so you can strengthen who you are spiritually. Count it all joy. Everything that you've been through was not by mistake. God has always been with you. You have always been washed over. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. There is there is no shame to be had about the life that you've lived. Now it's just time for you to awaken and to remember, to remind yourself of why you went all these went through all these things so that you can be the light that you are here on this earth. And I'm saying all this because again, this year, this time, this planet, this place, America, really needs everyone who can hear the frequencies of what I'm saying, who can take this message, you know, from their heart space to awaken to who they are and, you know, walk in their purpose on this plane because things are already very dark, but it's going to get even darker and it's becoming more and more clear. Spiritual warfare is being revealed and made more clear for us to see. This is a collective awakening. Our spiritual sight is being open to more planes. So we are seeing tricksters. We are seeing spiritual forces of evil more clearly on a mental, emotional, and physical level. Our eyes are being made privy to the spiritual warfare that's taking place on this planet. Their presence, the presence of tricksters, the presence of spiritual forces are being made aware of throughout the collective. Again, the first thing I started this off with was Cat Williams, his interview with Shannon Sharp. Go watch that video because he said all of this, the celebrity exposure, how P. Diddy's getting tried for sex trafficking and Illuminati this, false prophets that, we're recognizing the energy harvesters um, on this plane. All of this is happening for a reason. The celebrities, if you look at the etymology of the word celebrity, it means stars, right? We look to the stars, we look to the heavens so that we understand what's going down here on earth, on earth as it is in heaven, right? So if these stars all of their darkness is being exposed. This is a telltale sign for what's taking place on this realm and how all of these structures that we have built our lives upon, that we have depended on, are going to start to crash down, are going to start to be exposed or a light is going to be shown on all of these things so we can start to see this reality clearly and operate in who we are as God's chosen people. 
So as you can see this firsthand in your communities, in your relationships, in your friendships, right? This is what's taking place with this new moon and all, all of the things that are happening in the universe right now are shining a light on the darkness in your communities, in your relationships, in your friendships. Lots of relationships will undergo tumultuous upheavals. You will begin to see why or how God has placed you in certain groups around certain individuals so that you you can be a shining light in these places, right? So you can help awaken other people to who they truly are. Um, it says we're all going to start seeing the darkness within ourselves as well, within our family and within our bloodlines. In order for us to even recognize the darkness in our communities, the darkness within celebrities, the darkness within our friendships, the darkness within our relationships, it's because that same evil is living within us, you know? not Nobody here is perfect. Nobody here is 100% completely righteous. We just wake up every single day and try again. We wake up every single day and deny our flesh again and again and again so that we can live righteously, right? So we all have evil living within us. We all have evil lurking around us. I'm going to get into all that. Okay, so we're going to start to see the darkness within ourselves, within our family, within our bloodline. It's going to be mirrored to us through, again, our root the communities that we are involved with, the friends that we are involved with, the relationships that we are involved with. So I want to tell people, stop living backwards, right? If we see the word love, right? If you write love on a piece of paper and you hold it up in a mirror, it says E-V-O-L, evil, right? So I want to tell people to start living backwards. Everyone thinks that like, it's, it, it doesn't accurately spell evil, so it's not true. The only reason why you can hear me and understand what I'm saying is because you under you have been attuned to the vibrations, to the frequencies, to the sounds coming out of my mouth. If I were to play this video in front of the people who um, are Spanish speaking or people who speak Portuguese or people who speak Dutch, all they're going to hear is noise. And if I were going to listen to anything that they're saying, all I would hear is noise as well right? So I want y'all to understand language. I want y'all to understand vibration. I want y'all to understand frequency. I want y'all to be able to hear me with something more than just your human ears. So if you hold up the word love in the mirror, it's going to say evil. I'm saying this so that you guys can stop living backwards because we're walking around here and we're calling everybody our twin. And we're saying that, oh, this person is a reflection of me. This person is a, a mirror image of me. Little do you know, this person is only reflecting your dark sides. Y'all are saying this so... um just like laissez-faire, but not even understanding what you're saying. You're in a relationship with your twin flame. You're in a relationship with somebody who is a, a mirror to you or who's mirroring or reflecting all these qualities. This person is living backwards. These people are with you to try and show you who you truly are. You want to be with somebody who's getting you closer to love. You don't want to be with somebody who's mirroring all these qualities to you or, or, or a reflection of you. You don't want to be in relationships like that. You want to have friends who draw you closer to God. You want to have friends that draw you closer to love. You don't want to be around friends or be in relationships with people who are mirroring things back to you because if they're mirroring things to you, they're showing you who you are on the inside. They're showing you the evil that lives inside of you when you're not living or walking in love. So stop living backwards. We have this obsession with calling people our mirrors and our twins. These things are not your true reflection. You do not need to be with your twin flame. You do not need to be in a relationship with your twin flame. You need to be in a relationship with somebody who's going to love you and bring you closer to the love inside of yourself, the love that is within you and around you, right? It says you need to be, yeah, you with someone that brings you closer to God, somebody who brings you closer to love, not somebody who brings you closer to spirit, not somebody who brings you closer to the universe. You don't want to be with somebody who um, is trying to bring you closer to Jah. Y'all have these these false prophets walking around here and they're claiming that they live for Jah and they love Jah. And when y'all look up what Jah means, when you look up what Rastafari means, they're worshiping man. They're not worshiping God. They're worshiping man. So who do you truly want to be with? Who do you truly want to be friends with? Who do you truly want to surround yourselves with? What do you truly live for? <laughs> Thank you, Adia. <laughs> Says the enemy knows scripture. Yo, I had a whole, I just went through, let me tell you, on the third day, 
she rose again. Christ rose again. That Christ consciousness rose again. Anything that you're doing, fast on it for three days. Pray on it for three days. If you're talking to somebody, pray about that person for three days. If you, if you are thinking about a job, fast on it for three days. On the third day, that Christ rose again. Your Christ consciousness was awakened once more. Y'all, I need to tell y'all what I've been going the enemy knows scripture. I need y'all to understand this. The enemy knows scripture. There are certain groups of people, there are certain individuals on this planet who are tricksters, who are liars. They came to steal, they came to kill, and they came to destroy. And they know scripture, and they know just how to confuse you. They know just how to capture your mind. Anything that doesn't allow you to live freely or doesn't allow your mind to live freely is a trap of the enemy, is a trap of the devil, is a trap of the dark forces on this planet, right? So I want everybody to watch this and understand, I, and I feel like y'all will, because I, like I said, people are not going back to Christianity, people are awakening to the Christ within them. So I don't want y'all to hear these words or hear me saying these things and think that, oh, she, she's this and she's that. No, stop putting me in a category. I'm awakened to who I am. I went through trials. I went through tribulation. Y'all seen, I just came back from Costa Rica. I'm a whole different person. I have awakened to who I truly am so that I can transmit this message. So take away whatever blockages you have. Take away... um Take away whatever blockages you have, whatever boundaries that are allowing you to just sit here and listen. Just listen. Just feel it. And if you can feel it, if you can hear what I'm saying, then this message is for you. And if you can't, then you shouldn't be watching it past this point. You know, you shouldn't have stayed so long to watch this video anyway. And if you did, it's because I am speaking to something within you. But it's a lot more programs and it's a lot more things that you need to break down in order for you to really, truly hear this message and awaken to who you are. Right? The enemy knows scripture, right? You want to be with somebody. You want to be around friends. You want to be around people who bring you closer to God, who bring you closer to love. You don't want to be around people who are taking you away from God. You don't want to be around people who are trying to bring you closer to spirit. What spirit are they trying to bring you closer to? Why do so many people have a hard time saying God, but love saying spirit and love saying universe or love saying Jah? Why do so many people have a hard time saying God, but can say all these other things? Because they're tricksters. They're here to trap you. They're here to confuse your mind, right? Says the enemy knows scripture. These people can know scripture. These people can recite scripture better than you can because people don't read their Bible. People think that the Bible is a religious book and that they have no reason to be touching it. And they have no reason to, to be looking into it because they're spiritual, they're not religious. So you feel like you can't gain wisdom. Knowledge is, knowledge is power. Knowledge is what frees your mind, right? So if you can't take knowledge from, from anything or from anyone, then you'll always be trapped. If you feel like I can't touch this book and I can't read this book here, then your, your mind is already trapped because that knowledge that's in that book would free your mind. But little do you know, you're already a prisoner, which is what's keeping you stuck or what's keeping you feeling like, oh, I can't read the Bible or I can't go here. I can't do this. I can't do that because your mind is trapped. The enemy knows scripture. The enemy knows scripture better than you do because you don't read your Bible because you don't, whether you grew up religious or not, when you see verses coming across your timeline, you don't look at them. You don't read them. So people are able to use them to confuse you and trick you and trap you even deeper then <laughs> in the recesses of your mind, then you already are, right? It says when um, when the enemy tempted Jesus, again, Jesus is the son of God, right? Son is S-O-N, but it's also S-U-N. S-U-N means soul. Soul. You are a human soul. I am a human soul. When the enemy tempted the human soul, he tempted them with the word of God. And it even says that when, after Jesus was fasting, it says he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led by spirit. So y'all over here worshiping spirit and worshiping universe and are too afraid to say G-O-D. That same spirit is what led Jesus to be tempted, is what led the son or the soul to be tempted, right? 
says that soul on earth that was made in the image of God. You were made in God's image. I was made in God's image. I recognize you in every language, in every culture. God had to take me out of my comfort zone and bring me to a place where I don't even speak the language so I can recognize the enemy in every language, so I can recognize evil in every language, in every culture, so I can recognize God in every language and in every culture. Your spiritual sight, I, even a couple of hours ago, I was like going through it because I'm like, what the fuck? Like, my eyes are so open. I see so many things. Like, I, I'm so privy to the spiritual world and this and that. And, like, I'm just like, yo, what? Why? Why me? Why? Why? Why me? Why was I? Uh, Why were my eyes open to all these things? But it's so I can transmit this message to the people who need to hear it. You know what I'm saying? I recognize God's voice in every language. I recognize the devil's voice in every language. You have to study. You have to educate yourself so that no no matter who comes across your path, whatever culture they're coming from, whatever language that they're speaking to you, you're able to recognize the spirit and where it's coming from. You're able to recognize whether this person is a person of God or a person of evil. And it's that simple. It's that simple. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, this is my third time saying it. Go watch Cat Williams' video with Shannon Sharp. And he literally was like, you either on God's side or you on the other side. It's that simple. So you get to decide which side you want to be on. It says scripture is the only thing that will make evil flee from you. Jesus was tempted three times in the desert. And every time he was tempted, all he did was recite the word of God. And I have somebody tell me this as well. If you ever truly want to um, protect yourself against evil, if you ever truly want to protect yourself from the dark forces on this planet, you have to know scripture. You have to rely on something that's greater than you in order for these things or these people to flee from you. It says there's a new awakening taking place. We're awakening to the Christ within. You see the sins or the evil that you've been battling with reflected in your relationships, the lust that you've been battling with, the anger that you've been battling with, the shame, the guilt, the greed, all these things that you've been battling with, you get to see it reflected in your closest relationships throughout this time. We're all awakening to this. All of our eyes are being opened, not even just like our physical eyes, but our spiritual eyes, our senses are being awakened to all of this um, evil that not only lives within us, but lives with around us on this planet. We're all awakening to this at this time. So as you get to spend, you get to see what's been keeping you from God, what's been keeping you from living righteously, what's been keeping you from being a good person, what's been keeping you from being kind, what's been keeping you from holding the door open from other people, from being compassionate, for sharing love. You get to truly get to see y'all, because <laughs> I'm, I'm saying all of this now, but I'm excited to see how this um, video and this message is just going to transform because this year, this year is going to be whew, just something so intensely beautiful, but it can get very dark too if you're not prayed up, if you don't stay protected and staying protected doesn't mean having a hundred thousand crystals around you, staying protected doesn't mean that you calling on your ancestors. Let the dead be with the dead, okay? You have to worry about you right now. You have to worry about where you're at, you know, you wearing all these different things. Or, that's not protection. Protection is getting to know who you are, you know, or else you'll be easily tempted time and time again. You get to see what's been keeping you from God and what's been keeping you from living righteously. You get to see how you've been misusing your gifts because there are so many musicians. Oh, there are so many musicians that have been using their gifts to play on people's lust, to play on people's greed, to feed on people's anger, to feed on people's grief so you get to see how you've been misusing your gifts during this time and when you start to awaken to these levels of self i want you to have compassion i want you to have love i want you to show yourself kindness right i don't want you to be angry at yourself i want you to recognize the things that have kept you trapped the things that have kept your mind prisoner in order for you to truly be free to live righteously and to inherit 
everything that God has promised you on this earth. This whole land is ours. But y'all are misusing your gifts for money. Y'all are misusing your gifts to, to like, <laughs> even, I'm no different. I have this keen spiritual sight. And there are times, whether I was unconscious of it or not, where I misuse my gifts, right? And we all have to pay for that. But it's as simple as just awakening to, to who you are. You know, it's just as simple as awakening to the ways that you've been misusing your gifts and deciding not to do that again. It's it's that simple. You don't have to be upset about it. You don't have to, you know, just be angry at yourself for these things. But just become aware of it. Become aware of who you are and, and decide to live differently. Decide to be more compassionate. Decide to be more kind. Decide to use your gifts to help guide people towards light. <laughs> Every time I'm around you, I feel like you challenge me to grow exponentially. I'm so grateful that I could be that for somebody, to help somebody grow. Because anything that I'm doing, everybody else can do it too. Or this glow that you see me, like, it's not just because I came back from Costa Rica. I've been back for a week now, you know. The sun ain't been shining like this over here. This is something internal that I've cultivated within myself. And I want everyone to have this same glow as well you can continue to cut off your friends or end relationship after relationship but if you do not get to the root of the evil the darkness that is living within your heart that is inside you you the enemy the evil forces that are on this planet will continue to tempt you they will continue to test you you will keep reliving the same cycles and falling slave to the desires of your lower nature over and over again. You can cut off and switch friend groups every year. You can get a new nigga every three months. You can have a new girlfriend every three months until you awaken to who you are and get to the roots of your issues that are living within you. You're going to continue getting tested and you will continue falling prey. You will continue to fall to temptation day in and day out. And it's, and it's, it's, I want to say it's supposed to happen like that. It's like, it just does. It happens. Every day we sin. Every day we get tempted by the enemy, by the devil. It's up to you to truly decide, you know, whether you want to live righteously or not, you know. So it's, it's really not about, a, um, how can I best say this? You have to cut the head off the snake. You just really have to get to the root of your issues. Or you're going to keep reliving them over and over again. I think I just posted that on my story too. Life is loops until you remember. Life is loops until you remember. We've been living the same things over and over and over and over again. Until we remember. Until we, we awaken. Awaken. <laughs> like a tongue twister until we awaken to who we truly are and what our purpose is on this planet hmm. yeah all right you can cut off those friends or end relationship after relationship but if you do not get to the roots of the evil or the darkness that is inside you the enemy will keep testing you you will keep reliving that cycle and falling slave to the desires of your lower nature and to the evil in this world that is around you and is always looking for its next prey, its next person to devour. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if you cast out evil from your heart, it's just waiting for the next time that it can enter you or the next person that it can go to. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So it's always going to be here. It's always going to be around us. You just have to continue to renew yourself, to renew your mind, so that you're able to see these things firsthand. It says, uh, yes, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Do not conform to the patterns, the outline, the plan, the design of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. The only way for you to change who you are, to live righteously, to live a better life, is that you have to constantly renew yourself. You have to constantly 
renew your mind constantly day in and day out so that you can shed the different layers of yourself you can shed the parts of yourself that easily fall victim to evil to pray to temptation to lust to anger to greed you have to continuously shed those parts of yourselves where you start to not even have a desire for those things but the only thing that you have a desire for is kindness compassionate um generosity the fruits of the spirit says, whatever the world is doing, run fast in the opposite direction. You do not want to be a part of the hive mind. Whatever you see a group of people doing over here, run fast over there. Do not try and be like everybody else. You were made unique for a reason. You are different for a reason. You are different for a reason. You are unique for a reason. You're not supposed to be like everyone else. You're not supposed to look like everyone else. You're not supposed to sound like everyone else. Awaken to who you truly are. All right. That's my message. I pray you guys can receive this message. Um, <laughs> that it touches somebody's heart, mind, body, and soul. I want everyone to spend time in nature because that is the easiest way for you to hear the voice of God and it cleanses your mind, your body and spirit inside it out. I want everyone to pray. I want everyone to get into some scripture. I don't care what religious background you come from. Find scripture that resonates with you and that will lead you towards a path of righteousness and um, uh, shining a light on the darkness in this world because things are going to get extremely dark things are going to get extremely dark it doesn't matter how many crystals you have <laughs> it doesn't matter how many ancestors you pray to things are going to get really dark you have to know who you are you have to know that christ lives within you in order for you to overcome because that's that's what you know awakening to Christ consciousness is and having um you know spiritual sight <laughs> that's the only thing that's going to protect you your relationship with God i don't care where you come from i don't care if you're christian you buddhist whatever your relationship with God is the only thing that is going to save you moving forward we are entering the last days. And it's funny enough because I just read, um, I was reading Revelations and Revelations was talking about basically that, uh, I, I can't even say word for word cause I didn't truly like read it and memorize it. But basically this land, and I can't say America first and foremost, but would experience 42 months of trials tribulation or, or experience 42 months of darkness for real before the ark of the covenant is restored and the kingdom of god is restored um so we're in that 42nd month because we watched how the world went to shit with covid <laughs> right and covid essentially started like november 2019 move and then when it really hit and everything was shut down that was like march 2020 so y'all have to understand how this world works in these cycles and, and just understand that everything was written. Like, this is not coming from me. You know what I'm saying? The world would experience 42 months worth of um, trials and tribulations and darkness. And we about in that 42nd month, if not getting close to it. If COVID hit March 2020, four years or 40, yeah, 42 months would be this February. Almost. I'm not doing the math correctly. About March 20, between now and like April. So y'all get to see um, just how this message evolves. But I really hope that I can speak to at least one person. Um, and I love y'all. And <laughs> please feel free to hit me up um, and ask me questions. And yeah, thank you for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe. Share with your friends, your family.